Hello, welcome, what is good everyone? Tone here, and today we're gonna to be checking out Slice and Dice 3.0. A uh, big update to our beloved game Slice and Dice here. Uh, 2.0 came out something like 18 months ago, I think. Um, and that was a huge update over 1.0. So there's been a lot of work put into this. Uh, Slice and Dice, with the two updates that it's had so far, the two major ones have just been like significant changes to the game. Um, and I'm very excited to be checking this out finally. And I saw a changelog somewhere, so maybe we can look that up. Here we go, the patch, current version 3.0. By the way, if you guys wanna jump right to the gameplay, I think I'm gonna put um, some bookmarks into the uh, YouTube video so you guys can jump ahead if you don't want to see this. But I'm going to poke around some of the the screens here just so we can get a feel for what's new. Um, so we have version 3.0, Steam plus iOS. And by the way, I am on Steam playing on a clean save right now. Um, I'm probably going to unlock everything. You can transfer like achievements and stuff from uh, the other versions of the game if you had them elsewhere. But Steam is new here, which is really exciting. And I figured I'd get it on Steam here so I could check it out. Also, so I could leave a review, which Slice and Dice uh, definitely deserves. If you picked up the game and like it, I would recommend that you leave a review for them as well. As why I would for like any indie game, because um, those reviews make a huge difference for them. Um, but we are here looking at the patch for 3.0. Um, they added music. As you can hear now, there's music, uh, modding in quotations, green heroes, interesting, portrait orientation, and everything plus plus. Features, loads, I can't remember. Uh, and I completely understand why, because the developer on the Slice and Dice Discord posts like screenshots of like stuff they've been working on. And there's just like so much crazy stuff they've been sharing over the past year plus. Um, like there's like so much stuff in this game. It's going to take a long time for us to even see all of it. More items, enemies, heroes, keywords, modes. We've got music, infinity modifiers, tactics, a new thing like spells, which sounds pretty interesting to me. I'm curious to see how those are uh, employed, if they use mana, if there's another resource for them, um, what, what those are like. Uh, custom mode, choosing curses, playing mods. There's a lot of like events, options, so much stuff. Um, some of the stuff down here looks more... Uh, specific like cruel now works with damage all headshot etc that's one of the modifiers uh, better support for alternate party types interesting we have balance uh, lots have changed balance wise uh, shields and heals a bit stronger blessing stronger too. event system improved along for powerful events uh, very cool events didn't get used that much before um, bugs bugs fixed many new bugs to discover cool um, and so let's go ahead. Oh, I'm going to leave the UI scale. We'll put it on minus one. That seems pretty good. I would actually probably go smaller if I were just playing this, but just so every I can try and keep things legible for everyone watching, I think maybe minus one is a safe place to put it. Um, look, check this out. Jukebox. We got music here. Bunch of tracks. Uh, it looks like there's a bunch of options for music looping, um, DJ versus shuffle. DJ must be maybe a direct order, I'm not sure. Very cool. Numbers, clean save. I was going to import my my stats and my like achievements and stuff, but I think I'm actually just going to let this be a clean save file. Why not? Why the heck not? Um, so here we go, bypass unlocks. Are you sure you want to enable bypass unlock? Lock things are more complex, but not poor or powerful. This doesn't affect achievements and you can undo it. All right, we'll unlock everything. This is how I like to play these games. Unlock all is a button. Pretty much every game should have, in my opinion. Um, that's a whole other discussion so <laughs> that I won't get into, but I prefer that so much. Um, and now that we've done that, we can take a look at some modes here. Um, and it looks like things are put into folders. So we have cool modes like shortcut, choose party, loot raid. A lot of these are familiar. Some of them are not. Uh, curse, curse blurs. Yeah, there are a bunch of curse stuff. Blurtra. That's a funny one. 
creative modes, paste custom wish, whoops, crappy modes, demo instant pick saves empty. A bunch of stuff here. Let's stick to classic for now. And you know, I'm really like itching just to get into a run. So let's go play some unfair. Um, and so when I loaded the game, I chose, I clicked on unfair run and it gave me three options. And I picked one that changed my party layout. And I don't know how to change it back. See, I have, instead of one of each color, I have two yellows and orange and two grays. And since I don't know how to change that back, we might stick with this for now. Even though it is going to limit kind of the new stuff we are going to see. But I mean, that's just for one run. Um, I pick like normal here. See, it says choose party layout. And there's basic, which is all the normal stuff. Then magical, which gives us a lot of magical heroes. Oh, there's a new class type, which is green, apparently. And then defensive. Oh, and suddenly I understand this and why I can't change it. I think. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I bet you this gives you different options at the start of every fight or every mode, just in the same way that you can reroll your curses once. I wonder if you get to pick these once and then you're stuck playing with it because I think it might reroll these differently. Um, the one I picked on Unfair by accident is called Force. And I thought I was like forcing like a different color thing. I didn't realize it was force because it was like a lot of brute force characters. So I guess we will stick with this. Um, all right, yeah, let's just run with it then. So we get to pick our curses here. I have a blessing in here, which probably means, and this is a great blessing. This is gonna be hard to pick. Let's take a look at our heroes real quick. Uh, Brigand looks the same, I think. These are exert sides, which means they can be used and then you can't do anything the next turn. The lazy. I don't like this guy. This guy looks terrible. I might reroll just because that guy looks awful. I got the thief. Squire. By the way, if you guys haven't seen Slice and Dice before, I, like a lot of people watching this because I played like a ton of it on my channel, like already know this stuff. Um, but I'll just go over like a die real quick. And if we just look at like a basic one, the pips is like the value and then the image is what it does. So this does three damage. This does three shield. That's a dagger for damage. That's a shield. This is range, which will bypass a lot of on hit effects. <clears throat> like you can have spiked enemies that do like damage back to you. But if you do range, you bypass that. Um, so they're pretty self-explanatory. Like a heart means it'll like heal and stuff like that. Um, some of them aren't as obvious. Like this is self shield, and it's going to redirect damage from an ally onto you, and then shield yourself. So, <clears throat> I'll, I'll when we see like a new hero type, I'll, I'll probably show that right away, just in case people aren't used to them. But uh, I'm probably not going to cover everything because that would take forever. And we have here the defender, this nice shield guy. Um, so the yellows are usually brute damage dealers. The orange are like kind of roguish characters. They mostly a damage class, but they kind of are like themed for um, like a more finesse type of fighter. So you see ranged attacks and stuff. Um, and the grays are defenders. And the grays were kind of weak to having a party before, which makes me concerned about um, what we're bringing in here because usually you just want to do a lot of dps so having two grays um, feels like it could be a big problem for us but we'll see how it goes we're going to play this out uh, i'm thinking about re-rolling we get one re-roll just because this lazy and the thief I, I see a lot of x's here which makes me think this party is unreliable um, but let's take a look at our curses here before i do that uh, monster column squared oops no we are not picking this yet um, this adds plus two value to all the middle things in the monsters that's probably gonna be really hard worst items three this is terrible because you actually have to take negative items and it delays when you start getting to the good items this is really tough uh, i think we beat one of these on my either streak or like another run i did uh previously because i didn't realize that it would give me cursed items which makes it pretty nasty. Um, monster rights is pretty bad. This, the right sides are usually their nastiest abilities, like summoning and like different things. 
Um, this almost feels like it could be worse than the monster column, in my opinion. Monster rights are usually pretty brutal. I'm not taking that. Wanted makes our left two sides and all our heroes single use. What does Lucky Start do? The on the first turn, we get plus two rerolls. Interesting. I don't think that's enough to offset a lot of this. And we have to make 10 points of curses to start an unfair run, which means I have to take at least one of these four. Actually, I have to take one of these three. Because I have four, two, two is only eight. Smallbone is pretty nasty too. Yeah, I'm gonna reroll because I don't like these curses and I don't really like the heroes here. And yes, you can see when I reroll, it gives me a new option here. So we can actually go back to basic, uh, which I want to do. Um, but this is a pretty cool twist here, how you can do this. Um, I know having a party of all blues was like considered like kind of like an easy mode on um, custom party mode for like getting through a lot of the stuff. So it looks like magical only gives you one blue, but it gives you two reds and the new green uh, class. So I, I, some of these could probably be quite strong. And they did say that they buffed healing and shields and stuff. So even a defensive layout maybe is uh, going to be pretty, could be potentially strong. But let's stick with basic for now, because I think that'll give us the most variety um, as we are playing through the run here. So that was my reroll used. Um, let's hope that we. Uh, ended up with something good here. I got the scoundrel. If I didn't like X's, this guy is not the one to have. The hoarder. They have a lot of stuff. What is this? Guilt. This is new. Um, if it's lethal, I die. Yikes. Okay. Oh, but every side does two damage now. This one actually kills them. So the hoarder is like a glutton for punishment now. I think they might have more health than they had before, but three of these sides potentially hurt them. This is it heavy? I think the Hoarder got worse. They had a lot of one sides before. It would be interesting to go through and compare these to all the 2.0 versions and like kind of just evaluate them. So maybe that's like a, a video idea for later. So I am probably misremembering what a lot of these uh, sides were like. Uh, but this is like a, a high risk character now, which probably puts it more into their, their theme. And I think, because I think previously there weren't they didn't have as many two damage sides. One of their sides was the one where it, it doubles the pips and it was base of one, but it doubles it if it's the first hit. Um, I think they had the uh, Berserk side where if you're dying, it doubles it. So it goes from one to two. It seems like all their sides are just base two now. So that's actually really valuable early on, um, but they're a lot harder to use or they damage the Horde themselves. This actually probably is better because all the two damage sides come to think of it. Because you, you can kind of avoid that. They have a lot of health to deal with the pain. Death is kind of brutal, but that replaces what would be an X on a lot of heroes. The buckle. Ooh, look at that effect. I like that. And it's doing that because pristine means it's times two. So two to four if they have full health, which they have right now. I like that uh, animation there. The hammer, by the way, is heavy, which means they you can only target the enemy with the highest health which is pretty nasty because usually you want to pick off enemies as soon as you can before dealing with new enemies. The Acolyte. I think they had more X's before. They have a Cleanse now. Heal three Vitality, which grants the target plus three max HP, and they have three plus one manas. You know what? Some of these heroes are feeling so different than they were before that I feel like I shouldn't even be comparing them. I should just be treating them as new heroes as we approach 3.0. So I think that's what how I will approach this. Restore, cost two, heal one to all allies. <clears throat> and speaking of which, uh, it's been like a year since I've played a lot of Slice and Dice. And we played a lot of it w back when I was. We I was doing tons of games, like runs on this channel. We were streaking unfair, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, I've played on and off since then, but a lot of like kind of my like meta knowledge that I had were like, when I was like leveling up a character early, I might be thinking of a boss that's like eight floors later. That is like a big problem that like this character can solve. Um, I'm not gonna like have as much memory of that level of like um, strategizing as I'm going through and kind of relearning this. But I think that's also a good thing because I can kind of like reevaluate everything from 
uh, a base, like a more basic perspective um, without like worrying about that stuff because it seems like enough has probably changed that a lot of those biases I might've had from knowing 2.0 so well could even be a hindrance. So I think it is actually probably a good thing to just kind of jump into this and kind of like reevaluate everything that we're seeing here. Um, initiate here. I kind of dig this party better than the previous one overall, I think. Uh, let's see what our curse options are. We have one blessing plus four offered items. Whoa, that seems really strong. So instead of be offering offered two items, we get offered six. That seems extremely strong. Because that reduces like the vari like variance of the items all quite a bit. It means you can also look for like strong synergies. I like this a lot. I think we're gonna try and take this if we we can. Um, but it means we're gonna have to take 13 points of bad curses to offset the three that this takes. So what else do we have here? Early curses. Before fights one through four, you choose a tier one curse. So we get four tier one curses with that. Odd single use. All heroes add single use to all odd sides. Interesting. These are new curses. These are fun. Like, check this out. Like, you can manipulate this while using items and, like, you can pick your heroes. Um, this is really cool. I like this set just from a gameplay perspective better than the last one we were looking at, which just, like, made, like, three of those curses at least just, like, added numbers to the enemies. Big hitter. All monsters double the pips of all sides with seven or more pips. Ooh. I don't know how many enemies actually have pips that are seven or higher. Probably not a lot, at least at base. Some of them might have modifiers, but when they do, this is nasty. What's good about this is that this won't affect the early game, which allows us to scale up to try and combat this by the time enemies do start doing this. Um, and previously, those were a type of curse that was pretty valuable, is if you could like kind of delay the downside of it, the challenge, so that you can like build a party that could combat it. And also like the early game is like pretty brutal. So like backloading the difficulty tends to be good. So even though this sounds really nasty, we may end up taking this. How many points of curses do we even have? Four, eight, 11, 14, 19. What else do we have here? Slimer Spirit, all monsters get Oh, a plus on them every fifth hit point. And the plus is a modifier where when you remove that, they summon a slimelet. Interesting. So like the big slimes start with those normally. I wonder if this is like stacked where the big slimes actually like generate twice as many slimelets. That would be evil. Worst. Um, so single cast can... So Burst is a valuable spell we have. Um, it's flexible, I, I should say at least. Um, and this makes it so it's only single cast. I don't like that. I wonder if you can get this if you don't have magic users, like in the force party that we just rerolled. And Skulk says during the second turn, plus one pip to enemy sides. So how do we make 13? can take these three and then one more. Slimer Spirit is also a backloaded difficulty one and we could kind of get like AOE attacks and stuff that maybe help with the slime slimelets. I don't know if slimelets are any different now. Skulk, I think a lot of people did not like Skulk before but I tended not to mind it that much. Plus one sides is always pretty risky though. Interesting. Let's try the Slimer Spirit, why not? Oh, we have to take our random tier one curse. Like it takes slow spells, the maximum of four spells cast per turn or left sticky. All heroes add sticky to the left side, which means you can't reroll them if they land on the left side. The left side is usually a strong side. That ruins a lot of heroes, especially if they re rely on cantrips. Uh, cantrips are things that activate immediately when you land on them. 
Slow spells can be nasty too. Maximum four spells cast per turn. Some of the strongest parties I've had are regenerating a ton of mana and casting a ton of spells. It's really hard to foresee which one of these might be nastier. I assume most of the tier one curses are like this. So I don't think taking a random curse is gonna benefit us. I do think the sticky left sides is gonna be nasty early because I have this other one that the odd number single use, which is causing a lot of my left sides to be single use right now. For that reason alone, I think I might take these slow spells. Let's go for it. We'll just have to plan around that as we uh, progress. Tutorial, no thank you. Skip all. All right, what do we have here? Oh yeah, the initiate has gather. Replace blank sides with plus two mana this turn. I think that's on everyone. That would have been an interesting way to get around the left side single use sticky thing as I could have turned it into a plus two mana side. Okay, well, every initiate side is basically the same. Except I can reroll the cantrip. Um, so I think we're just gonna take that. I could just take the mana, we can do a two damage burst. What do we think? Heavy might be better here. I'll take the two damage guilt. I'll roll for heavy here. Pretty good chance I end up with a shield anyways. So this makes enemies vulnerable, which the target takes plus one damage from dice and abilities this turn, which it basically does nothing for us here. Because if I do one damage to someone to apply vulnerable, all of our two damage stuff would kill them anyways. Um, but it's a one damage side. I guess rolling for that would be pretty good, but I'm just going to grab that because it's unlikely with one reroll left that we would get it. Do I yellow for this? We stay the same two to three times, and I improve one out of three times. I'll reroll this. I don't think I need to block this uh, this fight. I, I could be have been miss. I could be wrong about that. The two block might be valuable, especially with like the single use stuff. My next turn might be a lot worse than this one, but let's run with this. We'll generate some mana. I can't kill with this, so we're going to take out one of these rats. I'm going to attack the one. Actually, I can kill both rats, so it doesn't matter. I don't think there is a way to do it where I kill one of these guys. Do I actually just take this damage? I think I might. And if that's the case... I want to kill this rat so that this guy has enough health to play his pain side if he rolls it. Alright, let's end the turn. Get my curses again. Big hitter, slimer spirit, odd single use. Odd single use is the main one that's going to be affecting us for now. Which is pretty nice because for like this early floor and maybe like early floors to come, this unfair run is basically like a one curse, one blessing run, because the other ones are not going to matter. Um, do I take the mana? Probably. Oh, that's huge. Does that already win? I think that already wins. Nice. All right, got an achievement there. Probably be getting a lot of those as we play through. Interesting, so... Oh, I get all of these? Is that how this works? I can't right click them to see what they do. So let's open the... Wait, do I get all of these? I don't know. Cause getting items and hero upgrade, I don't remember what this thing does. Is uh... Of course I can't right click. Interesting. So our blessing 
makes the chest sound pretty valuable. I think upgrading a hero is actually huge right now, so I'm gonna take that. Um, so I can upgrade my orange or my yellow. The orange would become the ninja. The yellow would become the soldier. I like the soldier quite a bit here. And this guy hasn't changed at all, I don't think. But the hoarder is actually already pretty solid, and I don't think I'm getting as big of a bonus. The ninja, at least, replaces this guy that has like a pretty nasty set of sides with this guy who has a lot better sides. This is a double use. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade the ninja just because the scoundrel is pretty rough. I do get all of this. Okay. Unless it's pick one out of the purples. Oh, it's a curse chest. Hold up. So I could take a random tier one curse. And then I can get four random tier one items. Is this going to give me eight items? Or is it gonna do nothing here because I'm not picking? I think I'm gonna accept this for science. Okay, it only gave me four items. Boo. And what did we get? We got a cursed item. It must be equipped as five damage to adjacent allies on death. Uh, the big problem with that is that it takes an inventory slot, which is pretty nasty. So what did we? What else did we actually gain from that? Uh, we got the wand of wand. It replaces the middle side with a one damage single use, inflict single use side. So you can we can make one of the enemy sides single use with that. The Anchor gives Cell Shield 2 on turn 1. The Courage Potion, add Potion and plus 3 pips to the left side. Wow, and that so that means when you use the left side, it's removed permanently. Interesting. We could use that on a fight before we know we're going to upgrade the hero, I presume. Or it discards the item, so that's just like a plus th a free plus three on the left side. Okay, and, and then it'll go down to its normal value. It won't remove the left side. Neat. A copper ring, plus one empty max HP, plus one stored mana. All right, that was mostly for science. I don't think we went out here because having to equip this is pretty nasty. Um, I'll throw this on the ninja because they have the most health and the least ways to kill themselves, and they have a defensive side. I'm rolling this means you dodge all enemy damage and effects. And, oh, I don't know. Let's give you this because it'll give you a little extra health and you're the one generating mana a lot of the time. So if you die anyways, then the plus one max mana doesn't matter as much. Uh, the middle is most likely to be hit. So I'm going to throw the anchor on you so you get a little extra shield there. I think I'm not going to use the potion for now. We can save that for a boss or something. This is pretty strong on the double use, although it might get discarded on the first use of the double use, so it might not actually help there. Um, there's a lot of ways that that could become pretty valuable, though. I'll probably save it for a boss or something. I don't think I care about the Wand of Wand. That's also one that helps a bit more for bosses. What are these bees? One damage. They do four damage and then they die. That's such a fun effect or theme for an enemy. The goblins flee if they're left alone, but they summon slimes, which makes them harder to make them flee if the other ones are going to be generating slimes. And what is this? Oh, this is... Okay, this is our curse that we get because we have to take a curse on the first four floors. Archery training, plus two pips to all archer sides. Uh, monster regen. All monsters with five or less max HP start with one regen. Five or less max HP. Hmm. I'm gonna take that one. Hopefully I get to a point where we can like kill enemies that have five or less hit points more easily, but that could be pretty nasty early on. We have a lot of curses here. Okay. You are getting attacked by three enemies. So I think taking the thing that makes you ignore all of that damage is gonna be excellent. I'll take those for you guys, and we're going to reroll these. Uh, yeah, I guess we need to shield the hoarder, huh? 
No, I'm gonna kill the bee. Why are you... Oh, you're dying because this guy has the barrel. <laughs> okay, so you're not actually dying once this guy blocks. So I can fish for... Ah, I guess that works. So what do I do two damage to? Doesn't make sense to do damage to the goblins yet. Almost too bad these bees weren't doing their self-destruct attack because I could have completely blocked both of them and not had to worry about it at all. I guess we just kill a bee. No reason to kill the other one yet. I'd rather try and one turn the goblins if I can. Or shield again. Would be terrible for the initiate. I would like to just roll your your damage side again. Reroll all of these. Copycat. So it's copies abilities from other sides, which would copy single use and heavy, which neither are useful at all. This is not a lot of harm in rerolling this because hitting this has like such high value. I think we just keep taking the single use. Take your mana as well. Uh, we can kill the goblin this turn. One of the goblins this turn, even if I take this. So hit goblin, burst goblin, stab him with this to kill them. The thing is, I could probably kill two goblins if you rolled better, but maybe I just take the, the goblin kill, play it safe. So which goblin do we want to take out? One is doing three damage to our initiate, one's doing one damage to these. Two of these guys have a lot of health, so one damage is a lot for them, but I do have to worry about this guy's barrel. Putting the barrel on a guy on the edge actually seems really strong too, because they only do damage to one other character when they die instead of two. Uh, let's see. Generate Slimelet. Ooh, do these do more damage than before? They might just be nastier than I remembered. Oh, I did that the wrong order, didn't I? Because this I don't want this to have heavy. Oh, but then I can't... Right, right, right. Hang on, do I, does that mean I probably do need to reroll you? Oh, I know it. Um, does this work? No, because that doesn't count as playing another side. This does, though. There we go. Little puzzle to solve. Little things like that are what make this game super fun. I'm not going to worry about damaging the bee yet, because if I can... Actually, I don't have to one-shot the goblin at all. I just have to kill these two next turn. In which case... Well, I'll still wait in case I somehow don't get two damage on my other guys. Because I, in a lot of cases, I'd probably rather kill the Slimelet. That works. Well, that's, that's game, right? Kill the bee and kill the slimelet. Goblin fleas. Sweet. So do I want to see my curse or my items first? Probably the curse. All monsters get plus three max hit point for each X, Y, and Z in the game. That sounds terrible. I think there aren't a lot of enemies like that, but still. Exposed middle. The middle hero gets times two to incoming damage if gained... No shields. Well, I do have an item on them that gives them shields for the first round. I guess we'll take that. Some of these tier 1 curses are getting pretty nasty. Oh, here we go. Choose an item. Arrow. Replace damage sides with kill an enemy with 2 or less hit point ranged. So 
So they become ranged, but I can only use it to take the lat the bottom of an enemy's health out, which would actually be really good for this Thorns fight. The Bone Charm, no HP penalty when defeated. Uh, when you when a, your hero dies, you come back with half health, normally. Uh, infuse herbs, replace the bottom side with heal two, regen, cleanse, and mana cost. So it costs mana to use. The scar is plus five empty max HP. That's pretty cool. The big heart is replaces the middle side with heal seven. That's not terrible. Leather vest is plus one max hit point. I kind of dig the arrow, scar, and big heart here. I guess Bone Charm works pretty well with like this death effect. Like I just don't have to worry about this guy dying. And there are probably other heroes that work similarly well with that. They have a pain side too, the guilt side. The Bone Charm could be really good with Hoarder and then other similar heroes actually. It actually kind of works against these thorns as well because I could just let someone attack them and let the person die. And then not worry about it next turn. Hmm. Yeah, I think I I I like the bone charm more than the arrow now. Scar is pretty good. This empty hit points that gives your healer something to do if you run just like, if you run, um, roll healing on the first run or turn as well. But I don't know, I'm actually kind of feeling the bone charm. Yeah, we're gonna throw on you for now. I don't know how we get through these thorns. You guys are immune to magic. I guess the buckle can kill one. I'll have to block them first. With burst. Oh, this will help someone kill it. Guilt is not what you want to roll. Cleanse would prevent the petrify effect that these guys are about to apply. I should actually re-roll this to see if I can hit one of the petrify sides. Which I believe the order is going to go is here and here. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's actually a reason to re-roll this guy if he's going to get petrified. Guilt is bad to roll here because I, I probably need this guy to kill one of these next turn as well. This isn't going to help me kill them next turn. You can kill one with this, and then you can kill one with this. I think that works. Neither of you will die, because you guys have enough health to tank it. All right. I think this is a challenge offer. I'm going to wait on that. Let's take our curse first. Brittle. It's another item that has to be equipped. It makes death permanent. Skulk, during the third turn, add plus one pip to enemy sides. Mm -hmm. That could be bad in this fight, really bad in this fight. I don't think I mind Brittle. Except now I have two item slots that are being taken up. Pairs well with the barrel hoops, because it's a character we just don't want to die regardless. Random tier one curse. Hmm. I think I'll take Skulk. It might kill us in this fight though. Um, it, the Skulk capping on the third turn Gives us a lot, a few. It gives us two turns, I guess, kind of three turns worth of actions to try and make the fight easier. Um, but in a lot of boss fights, that could end up 
it's a high variance thing, but like if this alpha f ends up summoning two wolves, like we probably lose. Um, or just like a three damage cleave, like it could be very, very bad. All right, we get to upgrade. We have the brute here. It's pretty solid. And then the herbalist. Heal one regen. One damage poison. Add growth to target sides this turn. But they're mostly generating two mana. Oh, and they have vine, which deals one damage or heals one, which is a very efficient spell. Except I can only cast four spells per turn. So this is a rough... Uh, spell to use for that but it does mean if an enemy has like one hit point left so I could save some mana which could be important oops the brew is pretty solid all around probably not great for this fight because the heavy effect I might not be able to burst down an enemy like I would like to um, but they do have the two damage self shield a stun is pretty solid when them having eight hit points. I could stun the alpha. I could stun stuff on the skulk turn. I think I'm gonna take the herbalist though. Getting these mana out of single use territory is pretty helpful as well. Tempted to use the courage potion. What is this? We'll add a bandit. The bandit flees an adjacent monster is overkilled by two or more, which I can't do. I guess I could do that if I took the courage potion. I don't know where they come in either. If they come in the bottom, it'd be really hard to do that. And I would get three items for it, but I'm not even, this fight's already gonna be hard enough, I think, so I'm not even gonna bother. Hmm. Just debating if we need to use the Courage Potion to win. Probably just slap it on you. I don't want to put it on the Herbalist. Wait, why is this still single use? Interesting. So the single use isn't modified by items. That changes a lot because when I picked that, I was talking about how you could like kind of modify it like that. But that does mean this is just like a five damage or a five side, which is pretty solid. I want to put on the initiate though because the initiate can keep rolling more and not worry about it. When the herbalist, it might be harder to fish for that side. I guess I could just give it to the ninja as well to do five damage with this. And I guess we could find out. Whether this applies. The double use? Yeah, let's do that for science. Why not? Okay, I think I'm gonna roll with this. I don't think I'm gonna use the wand to wand here because I don't want to cover anyone's metal side. All right, onto the fight. You are summoning a wolf. Should I re-roll this? Probably not. I'm gonna re-roll all these though. Damage, four blocks sounds good enough. Ooh, I could copy the pristine from this to make this do two damage. Um, and there's no reason to reroll this because I didn't <coughs> keep the potion on you. How much damage can I do this turn? Two, four, six, seven. So I can't kill the alpha this turn. I'm gonna have two wolves next turn. 
I can fully block this wolf this turn. Man, these slimes are going to be nasty this fight too. You have 13 health. I'd like to try and kill the alpha next turn. I'll probably get another 3 damage from you guys. And then I can tank the wolf and a slime. I think that's the play I'm going to go for. There's no reason to spend mana this turn. Oh, Gather could end up being pretty clutch this fight as well. Yeah, this is looking nasty. Oh, you're, you're summoning again? I really need to kill you this turn. Well, that's a good start. So... How much damage do I have to do to kill you? I already have three, so I need to do six. Here's another three. Well, hang on. You have nine health, so I have six damage in mana. Seven, eight here, nine. This is enough to kill the alpha and do nothing else. Which I'm kind of okay with. Like, I don't think there's any reason to risk re-rolling any of this. Except possibly the buckle. But the buckle is taking a ton of is like extra damage because I'm not blocking them. If I block with the buckle, I think they take no damage. Yeah, because I have the middle weakened, so they take double damage if they're not blocking. All right, so I think we need to use the guilt first. First, you let me use this to take the guilt off of the ninja. Although I guess having the guilt on there didn't matter. No burst, no burst. Okay, that is huge. Being able to take the alpha out. Okay, this, they rolled their cantrip side. Which means I gained one mana there. I don't think you're ready to die, my friendo. Take that. I could take Gather here. Although I think there's really no reason not to keep rerolling these to see if we can get better sides. I feel like I don't want to use the potion now that I feel like this fight is somewhat under control. Uh, maybe that's an overstatement. <laughs> okay, you're going to block yourself again. This has to attack one of the wolves. We'll kill one of the wolves this turn. I guess I should kill the one that's attacking blue. heavies so I can kill this wolf hmm I think we'd rather kill this slime puts me in a tough spot doesn't it if the buckle blocks themselves they won't die and then killing the slime will save the herbalist I can't save the herbalist at all. If 
I don't kill the slime because I don't. I can't get more than two block. I mean, I could use like vine to heal the buckle and have them roll pristine and then block the herbalist, but like that's not the way we want to play that. So the question is, do I let the herbalist die? If you roll your double side. That works. Is there a gather play here? Like if this herbalist rolls their mana, I can play gather, generate like four mana here. That would be eight mana. Which would be enough to kill the wolf and the... Or that would be eight damage total, which would be enough to kill the wolf and the slimelet. Maybe that's the play. In which case, I don't reroll this. Because one mana isn't going to change anything anyways. Probably reroll this, but I do kind of screw myself if I land on one of these two. And then I have two rerolls to hit one of these. Ooh, I lose two heroes if I whiff on this, which is maybe was maybe a thing to think about. But I guess we're committed now. Oh, I whiffed. Maybe maybe I just <laughs> maybe I just lost the run because of that. Because four slimes might actually be a problem. I guess I should have been rerolling this because then this vine actually would have mattered. That one mana would have killed the wall. Um, the hoarder health. This is bad. I don't think there was a situation where I could have killed the slime. Yeah, there was not. Hmm. Not good rolls. The good news is if I kill one slime, we s no, we don't. Yeah, we save the ninja. So I think we just lock this in. Which in turn saves the hoarder. We just look for some dice from you guys. Take the vine, that'll kill the wolf. Wait, I don't have vine anymore. So this guy actually doesn't do anything for the rest of the run because I can only generate one mana. You rolled another X. Way to go, bud. Okay, I can save the ninja again. Okay, that, that, that one's... <laughs> nice dice you got there, bud. Ooh, okay. don't want to use it, but I think I have to use the potion. That potion could have been pretty good somewhere else. Ooh, that was a close one. Alright. What item do we pick now? The needle, add picky and plus two pips to all targeted sides. Picky says the target must have exactly n hit points. Which I'm guessing n is the number of pips the side has. Hmm. Seems tough to use like all around.
I guess if you had it on a side where like you knew a lot of enemies like and like are at a certain like hit point range it could be very strong but uh, it seems tough um, add patient to the left side it's times two if, if, if I was not used last turn that pairs with the exert a bit I give them times two on his guilt side but if I was only using that after playing exert that would never trigger till at least turn three kind of want to avoid I guess Clumsy Hammer. Replace the top side with a 4 damage heavy and eliminate side. So heavy means you have to target the enemy with the most hit points. Eliminate means you have to target the enemy with the least hit points. That ends up being pretty hard to, to use. But when both enemies have the same hit points, you could attack them like here. Buckler. Replace the middle side with shield and blood loss. Plus 1 pip for each damage enemy. That's pretty solid. Foil replaces the the right side with a zero damage skill. Skill says bonus pips equals to my level. So that goes one, two, three for most heroes. It's not terrible. Flickering Blade, replace the rightmost side with one damage copycat. I kind of like Buckler and Foil here. I think Foil might be better right now. I could add a two damage side to the ninja. Or the herbalist. I give it to the herbalist, I think. I like foil. Oh, that right side. Hang on, what is that covering up? Your poison? Your poison's already doing like two damage. Maybe I give it to the initiate. Oh, you're only level one now. So that's just. Oh, you're still level one as well. I think I like that. Quartz. Oh, you got a lot of weak insides. Five damage, inflict single use. Um, and they die if we remove this pip exactly. Okay, the Slimer double summon slimes. Yikes, okay. Feels like a really tough fight. I'm gonna reroll this to see if we get lucky with the cantrip. That's a good start from you. I'll take that. That. I kill the quartz. I need to do five damage to you. Yeah, I can kill the quartz easily. Which saves you. Although, I might try to kill the Slimer this turn and let the Initiate take damage here. I don't like the Ninja taking 3 damage. This Weaken does mean that the Initiate's going to do nothing next turn, but let's be real, he's already kind of doing nothing. I get your heavy side here, or the, the big shield, although you're damaged. I guess you're not going to have the big shield. All right, we keep that. So yeah, I can... Kill the Slimer. Then I just have to kill the Quartz next turn with two mana saved up and deal with this. I, I, I like this, even if the Initiate's not going to be useful. Slimer just dishes out a lot of damage. I think we just take that. This would kill a Slimelet after he attacks. Actually, with just what I have here, I can kill this Quartz. I think that's reason enough to run with this. And if I kill the Quartz, the Initiate is saved. You don't matter. 
I think Gather would actually overwrite this, which is intriguing. Actually. Poison, it cancels out because of the regen, actually. Not bad, I like that turn. Oh, that is funny. I don't know if you caught what happened there, but he hit his cantrip side, which registered the cantrip on these copycats, which is pretty sick, actually. You take that. I mean, I guess we've already kind of won, but in like a lot of ways, but I wanted to see the cantrip trigger again. Let's see if we can go all in on the cantrips. All right. Slimelet down. Sick. Um, all right, let's, uh, we'll save this hero pick for next time, but we're gonna call it here for now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching, uh, joining me today for this big Slice and Dice 3.0 release. I am having a blast here and I'm excited to continue this run and to continue playing this game and checking out everything that 3.0 has to offer. Speaking like like this new militia guy. If an enemy I target gets five plus shields, I flee. Interesting. Um, we can actually make that happen. That's a cool way to deal with that. Otherwise, they... hey, this isn't a dice. <laughs> it's always just doing four damage. If I make this guy flee, um, he won't summon a slimelet either. Interesting. Snakes are super nasty though. I'm probably gonna try to kill this thing. Uh, so are the illusions. Oh, what a, this is a cool fight. I don't know if it's like, I wasn't gonna say it's like overly difficult, but it's a cool fight because there's like a lot of targets, uh, like everything you kind of want to deal with kind of equally. Um, but yeah, we're gonna pick this up next time. So thank you guys once again for hanging out with me today. Um, I'll remind everyone to check out the links in the description below. You can find my Patreon down there if you want to support me and my work there. That's over at patreon.com slash tonehack. You can also find my Discord if you want to come and hang out with me and the rest of the community over there. Uh, there's a wonderful discussions going on there all the time. A lot of people really into Slice and Dice as well. So I think there will be a lot of Slice and Dice chatter going on over there. In fact, I've already seen some going on as of the release today. But that is it for now. So thank you guys once again, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy, everyone.